What's up, guys and gals? Iceman here. Welcome to Chilling Tales. So there was a young man by the name of Colin. All right. This attack took place in 1993 out in Colorado. Now, this was before the times of which Colorado was just going up in smoke. You know what I mean? There wasn't a bunch of potheads there at the time. It was during a time of economic prosperity. And that's what Colin was doing there. He worked for a logging camp. All right, He was doing one of those practical jobs that we need, basically. The kind of job that not everyone wants to do. But, I mean, our houses are made of wood and so forth. So he was a good member of society. But he was an introvert. So he had this little trailer in his logging camp. He was about 23 years old at the time. Tall, lean guy, dark hair, dark brown eyes, nice chiseled chin, a little bit of a beard going on. A lot of the ladies in the area thought he was attractive. Which was all the more reason as to why it was such a shame when the black bear got a hold of him. So what's troubling about this incident with Colin is that before he died, he complained to the authorities about the damn bears. There were about four or five black bears in that region that would frequent the area where Colin was logging at the time. So he reported them to authorities. The authorities didn't want to do anything about it. You know, they would get into the garbage, cause a bit of a stir, but they never hurt anyone. So nothing was done at the time with these black bears. Interestingly enough, and perhaps unfortunately, one of the bears was hit by a car not far from the camp. The thing was just pummeled by a vehicle and died shortly after. Two guys from Colin's uh, logging camp went out and shot two more black bears because they were just getting too close to the proximity of the humans. Like the guys would be having their lunch and the bears would just be kind of stalking them out in the distance. And they didn't seem to want to go away when the guys would yell at them and shout at them. So they ended up shooting two of them. But there was still one or two bears left in the area. And here's what's crazy. It started getting so bad at the camp that Colin stayed. He had a little sector of land where no one else would sleep, right? It was just him and his little trailer. A, uh, it was a fifth wheel trailer with kind of metal siding, kind of a light flimsy door, but nonetheless, it was enclosed. And he thought that would be sufficient. But there were a few occasions where he'd return back to his trailer late at night and the thing was just destroyed inside. The bears would go through his fridge. They'd go through his cupboards. They'd go through his garbage, drink out of his toilet, and just leave with just junk everywhere. So he made a few complaints, but the authorities still didn't do anything. <sighs> now here's the hard part to talk about. Colin came down with something. It was like a flu or something. And his energy levels were way down. Now around this time, the buddies at his logging camp loaned him a 30 out 6 rifle, which is a really heavy-duty rifle with bullets that are like this big. It was a bolt action. It's a bit overpowered for a black bear, but nonetheless, more than sufficient, right? Because they knew that the park rangers weren't really doing anything about the bears. 
And they knew that they kind of had to protect themselves because the government wasn't going to help them out, apparently. So almost reluctantly, Colin took this rifle and he brought it to his trailer. He set it next to the fridge. He kept some shells in it, but he never even practiced using it, which might have been to his detriment later on. But that night... He was coming down with flu-like symptoms. Low energy, was breaking out in sweats. So he started taking some flu medicine. And he ended up crashing out on his bed without really addressing the door. He, the door had a small little latch on it and he made sure it was latched. But the fact that he didn't try to block it anymore might have been the reason as to how this bear got in. The previous nights to the attack, he actually ended up sleeping on top of the RV. It was so bad. There were about three or four different occasions in a row where the bear would come inside, ravage his RV, and then leave. But this harrowing night, he awakened from his sort of delusional slumber brought on by his flu medication. You know, that stuff makes you sleepy and dizzy, a bit incoherent. While he was in that state, when he awakened, he heard the bear fiddling with the door. And it must have been a pretty good size one. It was pulling at the door, swatting at it with its paw, most likely a bear that has been in there before. So Colin, without saying much, grabs the .30-06 rifle, chambers around in it, points it at the door, and he just sees that flimsy little door vibrating, right? There's not a window on it, but he knows it's a bear. He can hear the snorting. He can hear the aggravation. So he aims about in the center of mass and he pulls the trigger. And of course, with the 30 odd six, that's a big boom. And just the resonance of that sound must have been piercing to his ears. And for whatever reason, it didn't seem to phase the bear. In fact, it may have invigorated it. Colin dropped the gun from the shock. You know, it, it gave a big kick and it's just his ears were ringing. But suddenly, the bear rips that flimsy door open. And here's what's really unusual. I mean, for one, it didn't run away. Black bears are generally pretty skittish, right? If you yell at them, you look big. In a lot of cases, they'll run away. But it was almost as if this bear in particularly had a sort of issue with the guy. It's as though it saw that trailer as its own property or something. You know, it's likely this bear has been in there before the previous nights throughout the past week to the point where Colin would sleep up on the roof just letting the damn bear go in and out. You know what I mean? But I think it was accidental when he crashed out on his bed that night when he was sick. But nonetheless, the bear comes barreling through the doorway. And here's what's even more unusual. It sees the man not far from the door, with a rifle on the ground next to him, just kind of awestruck and in shock. So this bear charges through. It doesn't go to the sink. It doesn't go to the fridge. It doesn't go to the cupboards like what it would normally do. It goes straight for Colin. And it seems like Colin tried to protect himself with his arms, but this bear... It just had the determination to kill him. 
and worse. So it grapples around Colin, takes him to the ground, wraps its jaws around his face. Colin's just struggling and fighting, but he can't. The bears are just so strong. It's often said that they're feel, they feel like they're made of wood or something. Like a very dense wood. Just their forearms are just so powerful that it's unlikely any man would be able to pry it off. Especially with a full-size black bear. So it wrapped its jaws around his face and just squeezed and squeezed. And it crushed part of his face. And it just yanked him around like a pit bull. And of course, Colin just began bleeding profusely. With a broken face, broken skull, and... It dug into his center region, dug into his chest, into his abdomen. It's uncertain how long he was alive during this attack. But the bear began eating him inside the trailer. It's likely he was still alive when the damn thing started eating him. That's kind of the thing with black bears. You don't want to play dead with black bears. They're opportunistic. They're scavengers. They'll go through garbage. You know what I mean? They're not like grizzlies where it's often not a bad idea if they're provoked to play dead. You know what I mean? They just want to neutralize the threat and go on. But a black bear, he'll see that as an opportunity. Maybe a free meal. But not that this guy was playing dead, but after it neutralized him, it just started eating him. That's just what they do. So it was eating Colin in his trailer. And it leaves the trailer. Colin wasn't seen the next day. Presumably the bear went back the following night and ate him some more. And then it ended up dragging him out of the trailer about 30 yards out. Before the brush, before the thicket, it drug him into this patch of dirt, started digging a cache which is what they often bury um, their kills in, their prey, so that they can return to it later. It dug into them, it ate them some more, it shit and pissed all over the cache, and it left the area again. Colin's body just lie there desolate, broken, half-eaten, and dead. So it wasn't until the following day where a couple of his workmates went out looking for him. And of course, they discover this disgusting scene. Just this festering body with feces and urine and just gaping wounds all over the place, half of his face missing. And they knew it was something horrid. So from there, they call the park rangers. The park rangers come and check it out. They see a bear venturing around. They shoot the bear. It wasn't certain if that was the bear that went after him. It was a healthy bear, which is pretty unusual when it comes to how predatory in nature this attack was toward a human. So it was kind of up in the air if they even found the right bear because another one was seen in the vicinity but was never caught or shot. The logger saw it a couple days later, not far from the scene of the trailer. So, I mean... It was uncertain if that bear was ever caught. It was assumed to be a male Bruin that was maybe 300 pounds or so, 250 to 300 pounds. And Colin wasn't that big of a guy. He was a bit lean, so that might add some to do with how easy it was for the bear to take him out. And of course, he was dazed by flu medicine. He might have had a lot more than that than what he was supposed to take at the time because uh, he was quite distorted during the attack. Uh, Presumably so. But nonetheless, after this whole thing, there was something to do with his dad not really wanting to blame the bears. Just uh, saying how humans or whatnot have kind of been creeping out on their land. They need to be, you know, maybe moved or something. But his dad didn't really take it all that personally. He thought, um, you know, other measures could be taken aside from just killing more bears or whatever. So you guys take that as you will. You know, I'm kind of curious what you have to say about this bear attack story in the comments below. What do you think about it? Have you heard of this one before? What are your thoughts on it? Come to think of it, I think they did find the bear. 
They shot the damn thing. It was a 250-pound Bruin or so, but it was healthy, which was really unusual. You know, like, what the hell was that bear doing? There, The speculation was that when the bear attacked Colin, and this is what came to my mind when I heard this story, that it was actually a sort of showcasing of its dominance. It probably knew it was going back in to get food at the place where it would get food in, you know, the past couple of days. And there was somebody in there this time blocking it. And the gun goes off. Uh, the bear likely knew that was sort of a uh, threatening gesture. Nonetheless, whether or not it knew what the gun was or the bullet, uh, apparently the bullet missed it. But it's shocking that it didn't run away after that. Uh, so it, it seems like the bear wanted to showcase and prove its dominance against a human. And that's concerning. I've seen videos on YouTube of people walking away from back black bears. This one in particular, where the guy's walking away backwards, trying to fend the bear off with, with pepper spray. He doesn't use the spray yet. The bear keeps running up to him, standing tall like a cat, just trying to look big. And then it even climbs trees looking at the guy. Then the guy backs it more. Then it quickly jumps down and follows him even more. It's like it's trying to show how strong it is. Because that takes a lot of strength to climb a tree like that, especially if you're a heavy animal. So it's like it was trying to showcase how strong it was and how the human is no threat to it. You know what I mean? But it seems like that's what happened in this scenario. The bear wanted to showcase its dominance, and uh, that's exactly what it did. And which might be indication of what it did with the corpse afterward. Partly eat it, bury it, and mark it. You know what I mean? But let me know what you guys think about that attack in the comments below. If you will, like this video, subscribe to the page. Hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. If you want to support me, you can become a patron. Links in the description below. And blessings to my patrons. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace be with you.